Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the 10th in a series of video tutorials for Unity 5. In this episode, we're going to be looking at building our weapon for when we start getting around to enemies. And I think enemies will more than likely be the next tutorial. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set a button on our keyboard which will enable us to attack when we press it. It's really easy to set up. So go to Edit, then go to Project Settings, and then Input. Now over here you'll notice the input input manager sorry appears in the inspector pane in the axis. Click on this here and it'll display everything that's currently set. This is all by default in Unity. It's currently set to I think 18. Uh, if you have more than 18 or less than 18, don't worry too much about it. It's uh, it's not too important at the moment. So here you need to put in more than what is currently set. If you have 18, type 19 and press enter. Down here you'll notice this appears here, a duplicate of the one below. This one's currently called Cancel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this and I'm just going to call this one Attack. Make sure you remember what it's called because we need to reference it later on. And the button we'll use, a uh, positive button, uh, let's use P. That's I think that's a good one. So the settings aren't important at the moment. We may cover them in a later tutorial. So just collapse everything up and just click off it in your scene. Now we've set up the button we want to use to attack, um, we need to set up our weapon, which is fairly simple. I'm going to use a game object, and 3D object, like a cylinder we'll use. It'll be like a placeholder at the moment, but in this tutorial we'll actually animate it as our weapon. In the future we'll stick a weapon to it, instead just to make it look a bit more like a weapon. First thing we'll do is we'll right click, rename, let's just call this weapon. Nice and simple. So we need to drag this onto first person character, not first person controller. You have to remember it has to be first person character. It's just drag and drop in the hierarchy just here. Next we're going to zero all the position over here, so zero zero zero. We need to make it so as it looks a little bit more like a weapon rather than a big cylinder. So we'll decrease this to, let's say, 0.2. Yep, that looks fine. 0.2 here. So yes, we'll stick with that. I'm going to pull it out just in front of our camera to about there. And when we press play, we should be able to see our weapon in front of us. It's just a big pole at the moment, but we can fix that. Currently the rotation on the first person character is set at 90. I'm actually going to set this back to uh, 0. This helps us a little bit in a minute. So if we set the weapon here as well to 0, it just makes things a little easier. Our first person controller is facing towards the left of the screen at the moment, towards our uh, farmhouse that we made last tutorial. We need to make this weapon a little this way, just to make it sort of on the right side of the screen. Hopefully it should appear just somewhere here. Yes, that's fine. So it's appeared there. Next thing, we need to drag it down slightly, just so as the top hopefully appears somewhere around here-ish. Okay, so it's a little bit lower than what I'd like, so let's drag it up ever so slightly to about there. Next thing we need to do is we need to set up an animation to actually animate this particular weapon. If you remember, a couple of tutorials ago we did animation uh, on this warp here. We'll be doing the same in this one. If you don't have the animation tab here, remember you can always click this little button here and go into Add tab and then Animation. So once we're done, make sure the weapon is selected and then if you click on this little red button which is the record let's call this uh, attack uh, animation and then click save you notice uh, by default it is on zero and it's facing this way so we need to change uh, this one just so as it's set to the base and um, we'll keep that at 0 0.7 so 0 0 0 for rotation so last time we were clicking down here to change our frame number. I'm going to go to this box here and change it manually. So type in 10. It goes to frame 10. 
we need to set ourselves how this will look at frame 10 when it's fully attacked. So if we change the camera angle around, bear with me a second, and let's just get ourselves in a comfortable position that we can see the uh, rotation and movement fully. So about there, probably. So we play with the position and rotation over here. In fact, let's, uh, let's move it over just a little more so we can see. Okay, that looks a bit better there. So we're going to rotate this now on the X uh, 20. Okay, so that's going the right direction. So we need to put this just uh, almost fully down, but not quite um, horizontal. So let's put it as 80. So we set the uh, down. So we'll set this as 0 0.9. Yeah, 0 0.9 as a minus figure. That looks okay. That's fine. Next, we'll rotate uh, this towards uh, the left a little. So let's rotate the Z or Z to about 10. And 10 looks about fine. Now we need to go to um, our 30th frame instead of our 20th frame. So we want our weapon to come back up a little slower than what we actually swung down with. It just makes it a little bit more realistic. So we need to make 30th frame a duplicate of the very first frame. So these settings over here we need to replicate on 30. So we'll change this to 2, keep Y as 0 and we'll change Z or Z to 0 and on the position we'll set the Y as 0 0.7. Once again, if we press this button here, we complete the animation, and then when we press play, we'll be able to see our animation play um, endlessly. So we can see it playing endlessly there without us pressing any buttons. That isn't quite how we want it, so we can change that quite easily. The attack animation is there. We don't need to worry about it anymore in this animation window. So if we go to project, and uh, down in the inspector pane of weapon, we have animator here. Strangely enough, we actually have to remove that. So right click and remove component. If you go to add component and then go to miscellaneous, you'll notice that we actually have animator and animation. We got rid of animator, so we need in animation. So make sure you do click animation here. You'll notice a few different options do appear. First thing to do here is untick this option play automatically. That will stop the animation from playing at all when you start the game. So it's just still. So the animation isn't currently set in the first place, so it wouldn't have in fact made much difference. Kind of irrelevant. So what you need to do is you need to drag and drop uh, this animation onto that position which was here. So make sure you do have your weapon selected and then drag and drop that animation just here all the way over and into this little box here. We've done it a few times already so I'm sure you know what's going on. Now the attack animation is attached to our weapon correctly. So best thing to do now is create a little script. In your scripts folder make sure you're in there right click create and go to JavaScript. And I'm just going to call this, um, let's call it simply um, Animate Weapon. I think that's a decent name. So double click to open in Mono Develop. Down here you'll notice we have a little error uh, moaning about the animation marked as legacy. Don't worry about that too much for now, we'll fix that in just a second. So when you open this, as always, opens in Mono Develop. You guys know Mono Develop by now. We've used it quite a few times to write a few different scripts. And as always, once it's loaded very, very slowly, same as every other time, you just delete the few lines of code it already gives you. So we need to write uh, the script, which is a couple of lines to enable us to animate when we press the letter P on our keyboard. So we need to do a function. And we're going to have update, and remember it's a capital U on update. Open close bracket, and then open your curly bracket. Now we need to set an if statement to know 
if we've got the P button pressed. So we need if and then open bracket input dot get but oh I've just realized we had to uh, it's kind of auto completed for us and we don't want that. So let's uh, okay so it should be input dot get button down and then open bracket and in this particular bit here remember we need to quote what we set earlier as the name for pressing button P and we called it attack. Make sure you put that in double quotes. If you called it hit, type in hit. If you called it fire, type in fire. So if, like I say, if you call it attack, just copy this script as it is. So then we need to uh, double bracket there and we need to open curly bracket again. So now we type in if it is true. So if it's been pressed, then we need to get component dot and we need a uh, spiky bracket, sorry. Uh, animation, uh, close spiky bracket, open close bracket, and then dot play, capital P on the play, and then open bracket. And then, so in here we need to put in what we call our attack animation. So we call it attack animation. So we put in here this double quote, attack animation. And then double quote, close bracket, and then semicolon, and then close curly bracket and then close curly bracket. So these couple of lines will actually enable us to animate our attack when we press the letter P. So make sure you save just here. So once you've written these lines of code, saved, head back into Unity and we go to our weapon and here we just go to, um, sorry, not animation. Uh, we don't want animation there. Uh, apologies for that. Um, we need to add a component just here. And then scripts, and then click on animate weapon. And it'll put script just there. Now, the animation clip attack and blah 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 blah, marks his legacy. So we just need to define this particular animation, just give it a tick in a legacy box. Now, the funny thing is, I'm not entirely sure how you actually do it within uh, the inspector pane uh, in normal view. So I'm just going to go up here. And uh, yes, we need to go to debug. So I'm going to do it via debug. And it is really simple. You see here, legacy, just tick the box. Uh, once you've done that, just head back to normal view. And over here in console, let's just clear everything. It just makes it easier. So with any look, when we press play, and we wait for our game to, uh, to load up, and when we press P, we attack. Nice and simple. So let's walk forward, let's press P some more times and let's just attack. So every time we press the P button now it will always call this script. So whatever we do it will always attack. So this now has is a placeholder for our weapon so we can put anything within there and we can attack as long as we press the letter P. So play around with it as much as you want, uh, see what animations you can get going. You may find a, a nicer smoother animation to play with. Uh, you just have to remember that you do need to set up the P button or whatever button on the keyboard as your attack. You need to do that in your uh, edit menu. So uh, I think we should probably uh, tidy up this hierarchy before we end this tutorial. It is getting a little bit messy. So I'm going to finish off this tutorial by uh, creating a empty game object and I'm going to group together a few things in here. So right click, rename, and I'm just going to call this uh, Jimmy Campsite. If your name is Bob, uh, just call it Bob Campsite. If your name is Helen, call it Helen Campsite. Or in fact you can call it anything you want. I think it's kind of redundant what you call it. I'm just naming it a campsite it's got a fire. It's easier that way. So within here now I am just going to uh, put everything we created in the first little area under here just to tidy it up. So uh, we'll put the warp in there, uh, the fence can all go in there, the log can go in there, uh, the fire in there too, trees no they can stay, building 001 can go in and building 2 can go in, uh, keep bridge out, uh, warp can go in there, uh, yeah that no, well, I think we will put that in there as well, it would make sense wouldn't it? Okay, so we've tidied up our hierarchy a little bit. It's not an absolute mess anymore.
we'll leave the water out for now and uh, the world and everything. We'll play around with them later. So I think we'll leave this tutorial there for now. Uh, we've learned quite a bit about weapons and animation. Um, the next tutorial we are going to deal with enemies. I have ultimately decided we are going to start dealing with enemies. So we're going to use something called Raycast in the next episode and that helps us define how far an enemy is away. So we'll also be dealing with um, hit points or health or whatever you want to call it. Um, it may be a little bit difficult, there's quite a bit to do in that one. But until then, um, just have a play around and just enjoy yourself. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial and I hope to see you next time.